All right, so now in this next lab, you're going to be looking at plants and at plant pigments. So we can't uh, really look at the chloroplasts uh, without a microscope, but we can, we can look at the pigments, which are even smaller because we can do a technique called chromatography. And so that's going to allow us to separate pigments from a plant uh, and then look at them. To do that, we're gonna need a few things. And so most of them are included in your kit, all right? So you're gonna have little pieces of paper called chromatography paper in the kit. And you're gonna have a number of these larger um, tubes, all right, these centrifuge tubes. Now one of them is gonna have your dialysis tubing in it, which you may have already used. Hopefully you already used it because you did the uh, osmosis labs. So you're gonna, if it's already in there and you haven't done it, make sure you take it all out, get all the dialysis tubing out. And if you've completed that lab and you have the empty tube, then you're gonna be using that empty tube. You may have to modify your test tube holder now to hold these larger test tubes. Um, so that's gonna be what we're gonna use in this, this lab again, these large test tubes. You're going to come up with different solvent systems. So what that, what is, what that means is that you're going to get different types of liquid that are going to solubilize the different pigments within the leaf. Um, within the chloroplasts and then try and separate them. Now there's a way we do this in lab that has an optimal solvent system um, that I've already kind of set up and I'm going to do that as an example to show you. And then at home what you're going to do is use a variety of uh, things that you might have like isopropyl alcohol at home which almost everybody does and some other things. Now because of, because you're going to start to work with things that are, I mean you, you pour this uh, on a wound and all as well, but we don't wanna get any of these things in our eyes. So if you have some kind of eye protection, you should be wearing that if you're handling any kind of solvent other than water, really, um, and doing any of these, these labs. So I'm not providing you any of the solvents. You have to get all this yourself. It's all hand, uh, at home materials. Um, and that's what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna show you the basic technique and how it's supposed to look. And then, and then on the worksheet, I'm gonna give you some suggestions of solvent systems, but the idea is you're gonna come up with your own system to separate the solvents and then show me your results and, and hopefully we get some of them to work. So one of the things you're gonna do is get some of your paper and you can see here I trimmed it, right? Because if you take a look at your um, centrifuge tubes here, if we were to put a piece of paper in the centrifuge tube, it doesn't come all the way to the bottom see, because the bottom is pointed like that. So what I did is I simply took a, a pair of scissors and I trimmed this piece so that now it fits right into the bottom. So that's the first thing you're gonna need to do. Um, you're also going to need to have a pencil nearby because you're going to have to mark on it where you're going to transfer the pigments to the paper so that they are above the solvent. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. You'll get to see exactly what it looks like. And so how are we going to also transfer pigments to the solvent and where are the pigments going to come from? Well, a leaf. So you're going to have to, you know, get a house plant, go outside, uh, pick a leaf off of a tree. Um, the main thing is for what we're doing in this lab, you're just gonna use one type of material that seems to work for you and then transfer that onto multiple pieces of chromatography paper to compare the systems. Another way of doing this is if we already knew we had a system that worked really well, we could then use just those solvents but with different leaves from different plants and see maybe different pigments. But that, that's not gonna be what we're doing here because it's more the experiment of figuring out the, the solvent system. So I'm gonna get a piece of paper and you can already see there's a little bit of a green line on here. How did I do that? I'm gonna to try to show you how I did it. I'm gonna flip this around here so you can kind of see. So uh, I have a piece of paper, the chromatography paper. I have a leaf. I'm gonna put the leaf down here like this. And then I'm gonna take something like a penny. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it just has to be something kind of round and hard that you can roll across directly across the leaf and across the paper. You're gonna be smashing the leaf onto the surface of the paper, see like that? And then when you take the leaf away, there is a little green stain on the paper. So the cells have been ruptured and the pigments have come out and now the pigments have been absorbed into the paper. And what we're gonna do is, this is a mixture of all sorts of different pigments that absorb light at all sorts of different wavelengths. And what we're gonna do is try to separate them into different individual pigments using chromatography. So this is gonna allow solvents of different polarities to rise up the paper. Can you get a little bit of paper wet and then the, the, the water kind of bleeds through and any other solvent will do that as well. So as that happens and it rises up, right, it's 
will take with it any pigments that are soluble in that liquid at that particular polarity. And if you have a mixture of different polar solvents, you'll get different pigments coming out at different places. So that's kind of the idea. It should be at least that dark. If it's not, then you should re-roll it maybe two or three times to make it really nice and dark on your paper. Okay, so I'm gonna do this again just to really get a lot of pigment here for my demonstration. Now the next thing is, I said it's not gonna fit in there, so I need to trim it. So I'm gonna trim the chromatography paper, point it, and now the next thing I'm gonna do is, well, I already put the solvent in here, so I need to make sure that when I put this paper in there, the solvent, the, uh, the, the pigments, are not going to be under the solvent. They can't be below the liquid line. They need to be above the line of the liquid. So if you're going to put this in here and it's going to be below that line, you're going to have to then use a pipette and then remove some of your solvent. Ideally, you could put the solvent in here first, mark this with a, I'll show you, so let's say I do it the other way. No pigment on it yet, I just kind of line it up. I know where the solvent is, so then I can draw a little line above that with a pencil. Okay, And so then that little pencil line, that would be my target for the plant pigment. So when I put the leaf on the paper and I roll it and smash it on there, I'm putting it right over that. Do not use an ink pen or a marker or anything else. You have to use a pencil because those other things also contain pigments and they'll be separated. So what you do is once you have your chromatography paper with the pigments on it, you'll take it and then you'll place it uh, into your chromatography chamber and then it'll start to rise up. And so we're gonna, what's gonna be happening here, see if you can see some of that, um, while I'm talking and then uh, about what you're gonna do. Alright, so it looks like it's going to work. So what you're going to do is then you're going to come up with some different types of household solvents that you have access to that are safe for you to use and you're going to mix them up in different proportions and put them into your little centrifuge tubes. Those are going to be the solvent systems. You need to write down the exact proportions of them. So if you put say like, three mils of one solvent and one mil of something else, so I'll do that right now with this one, to kind of give you an idea. Um, so if I I'll put this in here, so it's, I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol, which most people are gonna have. You have your pipette, which you already had calibrated from previous labs. Put a specific amount in here, so this is one, two, three, of the isopropyl alcohol, Let's set that up. And then I don't have the nail polish remover here in this lab, but it's typically acetone um, is in there. Okay, so then I have some in this little bottle. So it's pretty much the same thing. You're gonna have a nail polish remover if you happen to have that at home, which is also a fairly common household item. It has other solvents mixed in with it too. It's not just that. So now I'm going to take another chromatography paper to do this as a demonstration. I'm going to get my leaf and repeat the same thing that you just saw me do. I'm kind of aiming now right for that piece of uh, the line that I drew. Okay. okay, so I have a lot of pigments transferred there. And now I'm gonna take that and put it into this solvent system and it's gonna be separated. So I'm gonna take a look here and see how the other one's doing. So you can cut, you can see, hopefully, when I come around the camera, take a look. Um, kind of move in here. So you can see that in the first tube here, there are now two lines of green those are different types of chlorophyll pigments. There's also a yellow line, which hopefully you can see, that's right above that, um, because we have different types of chlorophyll. We have carotenoids and xanthophylls, which are all different types of pigments that are within the chloroplasts that absorb light at different wavelengths and then separate 
uh, or that we're separating them out here. Right? Uh, their job in the plant is then to collect light at different wavelengths. So the plants can use a variety of different wavelengths from the sun for photosynthesis. And this lab is to try to figure out, um, you know, can we see some of those actual different pigments using this technique called chromatography. And so the idea is you make up your own solvent system, like this one over here, which I made up, and you can kind of see it's starting to work. There's starting to be some separation going on there. And then you're going to repeat this a few times and try to find a solvent system that you can get to separate them. You don't have that many pieces of paper to use for this, so you're just going to do your best and report the results that you can get from it. Zoom out there, okay? So once you're done, this isn't finished yet, you're going to then uh, take your chromatography paper with the different colored lines on it, and then you'll have your ruler that's in your kit. The different colors that you see, you'll kind of use your pencil to kind of highlight, and then you use your ruler and you'll kind of be measuring from the line that you drew on the paper up to wherever that color is. So say it's like bright green and dark green and yellow. Maybe you see those three things. So you just measure the distance from your, your drawn line to the light green. You'll measure the distance from the base to the dark green. You'll measure your uh, distance from the base to the yellow. That'll be these, these sorts of things. And that's a, sort of a, a relative migration distance that they separated. And that's something you could also compare between the different solvent systems to look at which one might be more optimal because we're kind of looking for more separation. If you get any separation at all, that's a success. So it, you don't have to see four different pigments. There are five different pigments coming out. That would be great, but that's not the uh, main objective of the lab. That's not the measure of success. It's sort of the experimentation, watching the process occur, uh, and then hopefully getting some kind of usable result. So refer to your worksheet for the specific details of what it is you need to turn in and do, but this is sort of an overview of how you would use the kit and the chromatography paper and the solvents to get everything set up.